Flash games, typically known as browser games, are games that are made on the Adobe Flash Play engine. These games are usually hosted on either their own websites or sites that are specifically made for this type of games. For example, Newsgrounds, which is arguably the most popular Flash game site of all time, has been a major part of the internet for decades, and it's safe to say that it's pretty much an internet culture. Flash games have played a big role in almost everyone's childhood. I don't think I've met anyone that doesn't know what cool mat games or why it are. Back when I was a kid, I wasn't allowed to download games on my computer, so Flash games were all I played in my childhood. Aside from the shitty Unity browser games that were ripoffs of popular games like Critical Strike Portable, which is essentially a Scuff Counter Strike 1.6 copy. I used to play Flash games all the time. Among the sea of Flash games, there are many games that are considered to be iconic or legendary, most notably Strike Force Heroes and Race. Both games were developed by Sky9 Games and they have made a pretty large impact on people's childhoods and Flash games as a whole. Madness Project Nexus, which is one of the most popular Flash games out there, and many more. Even if you claim that you have never played one Flash game in your life, you will have at least heard about any of these games or have probably seen them before because there is no way that you don't know about Madness Project Nexus. I found out about most of these games from free hack flash game websites such as Arcade Prehacks, Hack Online Games, and Hack Free Games. These websites let you play flash games that are hacked to let you have cheats like for example getting unlimited coins in Joe Biden Truck Simulator. I played countless of flash games and I had fun with all of them equally because I was a child. But there is one game that stands out among the endless sea of flash games, a game so revolutionary that it actually blows all the other games out of the water with its quality, a game so revolutionary that people call it the Half-Life 2 of flash games. This is Plus Mobius 2, developed by Eric Good, who has made other games such as Dead Drunk, a game that lets you play as a drunk stickman with the objective being to try not to kill yourself with every step you make. This truly says a lot about society. I look, can't believe I made society. Like the title suggests, Plus Mobius 2 is a direct sequel to Plus Mobius Forward to the Past. Now, I won't go too in depth on the plot here as I want you to experience it for yourself. The plot of the first game heavily relies on the Marine and Noir Lime, who is the protagonist and his ally. It takes place at a time when the Earth is almost completely destroyed. Correction 9 sent the two troops to reverse the course of events. But it all went wrong when there was an error in the calculations, and they arrive on a nearby planet, presumably Mars, inhabited by a separate alien faction which is hostile to the Marine and Noir. The plot of Plus Mobius 2 picks up of the events of Forward to the Past, set in a post apocalyptic world where humans, known as civil security, are fighting against a mysterious alien race known as the Separation Force. The Marine is tasked with surviving through fight sequences or levels that involve combat scenarios in which they fight both factions, as well as other non-affiliated enemies. Now if you see there are a few similarities between the plot of Plasma Burst and Half-Life, with both games having their plot involving around scientists and portals to another dimension, other than that there are a lot of great slash crawl issue to games. But one of the main reasons that made Plasma Burst 2 unique and legendary among the other slice scroll shooters is the gameplay. The gameplay of Plus Mobius 2 heavily relies on physics as nearly everything you do involves physics in some way. Like for example, throwing a barrel using telekinesis, throwing the grenade that someone launched at you and red dolling when your weapon recoil is too powerful. Or mechanics such as self-boost which allows you to throw yourself against the sky almost like you're flying by using the melee and clicking the red doll key. These features make the game movement feel dynamic and unique compared to other games. This is a big step up from the previous game, Forward to the Past. While the game definitely had physics, it was only used for death, and having physics in a flash game isn't a groundbreaking thing. Happy Wheels had it, Intruder Combat Training, which is another well done game, also had it, but Plus Mobius 2 took physics to a whole other level and made the game physics driven. One of the reasons why I don't like Forward to the Past is the stiff and bouncy movement, even though I dislike that, I feel like it sort of adds a bit of charm to the first games. The gunplay here is pretty fine, each weapon has its own use, and honestly, the developers did a good job of keeping the weapons balanced in this game. You don't find yourself only using 
one weapon you will have to use all of the weapons that you have and i find that kind of gunplay to be cool it doesn't make any of your weapons useless except for the pistol because i don't think people use that unless you have nothing left a problem that i found in the previous game was the gunplay since there are fewer guns in the first game compared to the sequel i will always find myself using the same three guns aside from the guns the melee system here is really one of the reasons that make this game's gameplay really shine alongside the telekinesis you can deflect bullets by slicing the air which is pretty cool i don't find myself using it too much since sometimes you have to be a bit perfect to deflect the bullets maybe it's because i have a bad reaction time but shut up plasma boost 2's gameplay isn't perfect by any means it does have its flaws at times but what makes it impressive is the fact that this game is made on the same engine as call of beaver another factor that makes plasma boost 2 legendary is the multiplayer There are no other flash games that let you truly play multiplayer like Plasma Beast 2. The closest thing that other games could come to having multiplayer as a feature is community made maps, like for example Happy Wheels and Free Rider. Free Rider comes close to having multiplayer because you can try to beat people's cars with other people's ghosts. Plasma Beast 2, on the other hand, puts all of these games to shame because it actually has multiplayer. One of the things that makes the multiplayer special are the community made maps. The amount of effort put into the maps and the variety of maps is just phenomenal. One second you're playing a co op mission set during Overwatch. 2 and the next you're playing 5 Night Freddy's thanks to the advanced level editor, the modding scene and the talented map creators, they've been making new experiences for players to enjoy or mastering the magic of the old maps to incorporate into their own style. One of the early type of maps that I've played was the school RP maps and Saw. These roleplay and Saw maps are incredibly popular in the Plasma Base 2 community and still to this day you will find at least a few maps revolving roleplay or Saw. The roleplay maps are what you will expect them to be. Sometimes it can be utter chaos when someone gets a gun and starts to go on a rampage that's, that's definitely what i like about roleplay maps the fact that they can go from a normal roleplay to straight up carnage is an incredible experience the saw maps are based on the saw movie having multiple obstacles to escape and sometimes you have to sacrifice yourself in order for the level to progress there are of course many variations on this type of maps and not all of them are the same thing over and over again there are many other unique game modes that i could talk about but i don't want my video to be two hours long another thing that made the multiplayer memorable was of course the community The community isn't terrible by any means. Some players can be really nice and friendly and overall just fun to talk with. Some can be really awesome like that time when I called some random player a nerd and they started to call me 18 different slurs. Truly the kindest person I've ever met. But that's not really a major concern in this game since you will encounter these children like two times in one year. Other than that, one thing that I appreciate is how people go up and from their own clans. It was fun and interesting for me at the time to see other clans create matches for clan wars or recruit clan members aside from that clans like biohazard gino and many more really made being part of the community more exciting back then that's not to say that the game's community wasn't exciting at all having clans roam around the game like insects and creating wars over other clans was really cool and unfortunately the last time i've ever seen an actual clan functioning was in 2021 and that was a clan called tertiary order a clan revolving around clearing guests like there's some sort of past in an old video of mine i encountered a match where the tertiary order clan were recruiting people as I suggest you don't watch that video because it was complete dog shit. This is plus marbles too. <laughs> Ever since Adobe Flash and the support, it has taken a pretty big hit on the fanbase and it has done permanent damage. The developer Eric Good did make the game into a standalone launcher, which helped regain some players but the damage has been done. From 2013 to 2017, Plasma Beast 2 was at its peak, with over 5,000 players and a fuck ton of matches to play in. At the moment, there are only around 40 active players, which is a bit underwhelming because the last time I played Plasma Beast 2 was in 2020 and at that time, there were a decent number of players, with the minimum reaching only 19 players however none of this is really the deaths or the players fault as many people start to lose interest and stop playing because of player fatigue and the wait for the upcoming sequel plus mobus 2.5 the player count starts to decrease over time now there's a small community and i'm actually quite grateful to know that people are still playing this game even of their impact of flash player also something to note the developer of plasma burst eric good is currently living in ukraine as you probably know ukraine is not in a good situation currently i will appreciate if you could at least donate to his Patreon, since that will help him have money for food and definitely boost his development for plus one base 2.5. I'm not sure about the last part though, I think I think I made it up, but uh you know, don't it.
This game provided me with many wonderful memories which I recall to this day. No other Flash games have achieved this level of greatness. Okay, that is debatable. But anyway, moving on, I strongly urge you to check out this game as the campaign is decently long. It's like an hour. An hour. It's like an hour. It's an, and compared to other Flash games and the first Plasma Burst, Plasma Burst 2 definitely has one of the longest campaigns in the history of Flash games. But also check out the multiplayer, there are still active plays in the game to keep the game living. I would also like to shout out to Xenosins for helping me out with a few parts of the script since this is my first time making a video like this. Also shout out to Derma, I don't know I don't know how the fuck his name is supposed to be pronounced but I really like his content and his video on Plasma Burst 2. Other than that, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did. And dislike if you did subscribe to the people i mentioned donate to the developer join the discord join the plus marbles community discord and play plus marbles too and thanks for watching but that's not really a major concern in this consent that but that's not but that <laughs>